everyone. I am Kristen Veganis, the lead actress in I Am Lisa, and you are watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. I am joined today by, and the lead actor, actress, I should say, of I Am Lisa. We're joined today by Kristen, insert last name here. <laughs> Kristen Veganis, or up for interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How did you get involved with, with this film? Was was Eric badgering you as well? I mean, sorry, was Eric hiring you as well? <laughs> you know, he actually was, I will say, <laughs> because he um, found me online, I believe, some work of mine, um, and reached out to me a year before we shot the film, uh, sending me the script and asking if I'd read it. and. Um, at the time, I had sent him a bunch of notes on all the potential and all the things that I loved, but then also the things I would change and uh, just politely declined at the time. But um, he, he, as you've said, he comes back. So <laughs> when he, we were about a few months before filming, I think he uh, emailed me again and had taken a lot of those notes, a lot of other people's notes, I'm sure, too. The script was in a much better place. And um, he sent it to me again and said, you know, I've really always envisioned you in this role. Would you please give it another read? And I did and um, really loved it at the time. And so then I think I taped a couple scenes so Patrick could sign off. And then I was in Kansas City like a month or two later. Um, so, yeah, he, he sticks to it. And um, and really, it all came together in a way that I was I was excited to sign on. I've only seen like three werewolf films in, in, in my lifetime. Horror is not my, my wheelhouse, but I do appreciate the aspect of it. Where it's it's Underworld, American Werewolf in Paris, and now this film I can safely say, based on what I've seen, uh, are, are some really interesting takes on the werewolf genre. Uh, for you as, a, as an actress, though, what drew you to this lead character? Yeah, so for myself, I'm not a huge consumer of movies like this either, and I had to watch a few as research after signing on to get a sense of the tone and um, the style and just the genre that I would be stepping into. But what I loved about the movie was that it was like a underdog female character who's kind of keeps to herself and would really rather stay out of the limelight, you know, would never volunteer to save a city or anything like that, would never voluntarily become a superhero by any means. So I liked that it was just this girl that you could root for, who uh, I think we can all relate to, you know, she gets bullied, she gets picks on, picked on, and um, that she just sort of stumbles into this reality where she's given abilities and, you know, capabilities and strength and urges and stuff that she can use either for good or for bad and um, that you just get to step into her shoes as she undergoes that, that transformation and also that stepping into her own power kind of thing. I really admired that about the story and was excited to bring that out in Lisa. Uh, first day on set, what was the, the energy about the first scene once that was done? It was actually pretty uh, hysterical how we would read each other's minds, Patrick. We would like, one of us would have an idea and then the other one would be like, oh yeah, we were already doing that. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it was pretty crazy. It worked out really well. Um, but yeah, the first the first couple days, I think we spent the first three days, if I remember correctly, all in one location, which was also nice because you can kind of settle in and really get to know everybody and feel like you have a home base a little, like you're not just running around from location to location. So I think it uh, worked out for everyone to kind of get that little family group mind right. thing and, and it worked out really well. The special effects makeup, and, and, I, I, and I'll talk with, about this for, for everyone as well. Um, you, you rock that special effects makeup. I mean, you had some really talented individuals. You know, what was it like to being transformed to, to that state? Yeah, it was a lot of fun to work with all the special effects. I mean, Jake's amazing. He's like a wizard and a perfectionist. And so he just made everything look so good and so professional. And um, and he was also very cool about like explaining it all to me as we would be, because we'd be sitting in that chair together for sometimes over an hour, you know? And he was just so cool about like explaining all of the pro all of the steps of the process as we'd go. So I really knew like kind of what angles would showcase it the best and, and things like that. But um, it was really great. And I think it was done so well that it like did half of my job for me, you know, cause you look in the mirror and you see 
suddenly what you look like and you look like a werewolf and you're kind of like, oh, all right, okay, I get it. <laughs> like you can't go around acting like, you know, your normal self. And um, so I know we, we did most of the movie. Um, Lisa only has like the, the fangs and the nails and the contacts. Um, it isn't until the end that she starts to transform more fully. Um, so those I, I got pretty comfortable in, but I'll, I'll tell you in the beginning, I was so worried because I don't wear contacts. I don't wear glasses. And I like told Jake and our other makeup artists, I gave them like full permission to pry my eyes open because I said, I will try to shut them on you. Like <laughs> my impulses will kick in. So, but we got it down pretty quickly after, after the first couple of tries and, and we're doing it all in like 10 to 15 minutes by the end. But um, the full effects were awesome. The prosthetics were really, really great. And it just, completely put me into like that mentality and that physicality, which was really helpful. So Speak I owe Jake a lot. As an actress, though, it, it, you definitely take yourself out of yourself when you're portraying this character, obviously. And mm. it, it's a great mental state to, to kind of separate yourself from yourself. Uh, but acting as Lisa, though, I mean, what inspirations were you drawing upon to, to make her so realistic and believable? Yeah, well, I typically do try to draw from my own life and experiences as much as I can because it's what is fullest in my brain and heart. And um, so I, when I have a new character, my first thought is always how am I similar to this person? How am I different from this person? And so for Lisa, I think that her and I are similar in our like little snarky kind of side comments, but I'm probably a bit more outspoken than she is. I think she's a little more introverted than me. So, um, but we all have those moments. I mean, I've certainly been in the mood to just crawl into a good book and, you know, talk to nobody except my best friend who I'm really comfortable with and just kind of like disappear. And so I leaned into that part of myself and into those moods and the, the brain space that I've been in um, in times like that. And uh, just, kind of leaned into like that those characteristics a little bit more and then as Lisa evolved and changed I could add a little bit more you know bravery and and strength and like gusto into her and stuff um uh obviously I've never planned on eating people so that one I had to sort of <laughs> uh stretch the imagination a little but then again you think you've never had that inclination but if you dig deep enough and have to get there you can imagine a time when you've thought about someone in your life that you would maybe <laughs> want to just kind of destroy so <laughs> somehow you can fill in the holes <laughs> well no for sure it's uh, it's definitely something that that takes a, a, a true team effort and from what I'm, from what I'm hearing from you guys with with I am Lisa and 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 the experiences everyone that went through this film it sounds like it's an incredible um, it was an incredible time and a short amount of time to make it a truly uh, epic feature film so thank you for for the, the trailer and thank you for your hard work for that I can't wait to see the feature film on when when is the feature film coming out um, so in the in the United States, uh, January fifth at Redbox kiosks uh, across the U.S., and then Mutiny Pictures, our distribution firm, has signed a deal with I think it's called Level Film, in to release the film in Canada. And I don't have an exact date on that. Oh no worries. Um, but I will get that to you as soon as I find out. <laughs> yeah, you don't know, do you, Patrick? It's uh, and then I think in March we've got more release, right? We've got like yeah, yeah. Amazon and DVD and Fandango and iTunes and stuff. Yeah. And Blu-ray. Blu-ray is going to be apparently exclusive at Best Buy, um, which is cool. Yeah. And um, but then like the UK release, I think is supposed to be in April. Mm. And I don't know when the Canadian release is going to be, but we yeah we signed with Level Film, which is, is a cool company. Um, I think they distributed um, the Peanut Butter Falcon last year and some other uh, pretty well-known movies. So, was there um, a favorite scene, or was there something where you were like, you know, this is what I I dreamed to be as an actress? Oh, that's a fun question. Um... I mean, to be honest, it's it's maybe a little bit lame of a question, but like piecing it all together and kind of creating the arc of the story and of Lisa's experience and 
filling in the holes here and there, whether that be like in conversation with Eric and Patrick and any other um, actors involved in the scene, or, you know, those just moments of collaboration are kind of the moments that most, uh, that, that most represent like what I've always wanted to do is like creating a full story, like tr taking an audience from point A to point B along this character's journey. And there were so many moments where we would all kind of have to put our heads together and figure out like exactly how we get from here to here or why she does this. And, and those, that's also why I love independent film because you can do that on the spot. And, you know, we all want to do big blockbuster studio films, but you know, then you've got a food chain that you've got to go up on every decision and, get sign offs from you know whoever so I just those moments where it's like we're here we're all hands on deck like coming up with exactly the story we want to tell is is just is those are the moments where like a bunch of creative minds come together that um that's really what I've always wanted to do and those were the moments that I'd go home to like my hotel at the end of the night and I would often like I would take a moment and be like this is pretty cool this is what we wanted to do we're doing it and for me it's actually kind of the opposite because I I'm so appreciative for any time that my career takes me to a part of the country or world that I otherwise would never have seen. You know, if you asked me three years ago what my favorite restaurant in Kansas City is, I would be like, I don't know, and I never will. <laughs> but <laughs> now I do, and uh, and I met a whole new group of people and got to see a whole new part of the world that I that I don't get to. So I am appreciative for you know the travel that it's allowed me as well. Everyone has one or two people that kind of inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? An actress whose work I admire immensely and the way she has held herself in the industry and all of the above. She's a, definitely a role model for me. One of them is Sandra Bullock. Mm -hmm. I love her work. I've been compared to her a couple times, which I'm like, oh my God, thank you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and another is... Um, Elizabeth Moss and Elizabeth Moss now has a production company and she produces her own work and options scripts from plays and books that she admires. And that is definitely something I'd like to do with the rest of my career as well. Uh, and I've started doing so I would say if I can follow in either of their footsteps um, and work as hard and passionately as they do, I'll be okay. Looking at your resume and you have a, a large resume, by the way, and a very wide spectrum of comedy and drama, which congratulations like that comedy and drama side by side that's that's difficult to do and you do it very well but the question is from a professional standpoint you've done commercials you've done stage you've done film you've done tv series you've done web series you're professionally successful in that regard but do you consider yourself personally successful yeah first of all thank you that's sweet um you know, it's so easy to focus on what you haven't done and what you haven't yet accomplished and what you want that you don't yet have. And uh, like Eric said, to focus on the finances or the career milestones. Um, and I'm sure a victim of that. Um, I'm always impatiently waiting and trying to get the next thing. Um, so something I'm just personally working on is being grateful for what I have done and what I do have and taking moments to appreciate that and um, to congratulate myself on that. But even more so, I think Eric really hit the nail on the head. It's if you if you monetize your life like that and only see your value in professional success, you know, it's like that stuff can all go away any day. But, you know, I feel very successful um, personally because I have a lot of really close friends and family who love me and who I love and um, people who care about me and want success for me. So I think that that, you know, is just so much more powerful and, and helps you sleep at night more so than anything career-wise can of knowing that you're a good person and that people out there support you and um, want good things for you. So I'm very grateful to say that that's true for me. And on a day that's stressful or that doesn't feel, you know, successful, I have that to, to lean on and I'm grateful for it. The reverse of success is failure. 
How do you deal with your failures? Yeah, well, I don't know. As an actor, you have to get very comfortable with failure, <laughs> which just another word for rejection, I guess. It's like if you get hung up on every opportunity or every chance or every piece of work you put out there, you'll never make it. I've gotten comfortable enough with it. It's like you got to have a sense of humor about it. You got to be able to look back and laugh because otherwise you'll never, you know, you'll, you're, you're thick, won't, uh, your skin won't be thick enough is what I want to say. But um, yeah, as long as you can learn from each and every one of them, you know, and not be too hard on yourself. I know it's easy to do that too, but just got to sort of know that you put in effort. And if there's something you can, you know, pick out that, that could have been improved, take that from it and know that the next thing you do will be better because of it. You know, you're not going backward. Um, it all helps in the future. So yeah, you have to have a good energy around it, unfortunately. <laughs> The younger generation are looking at your work and they're becoming inspired to be creative in their own right, either being an actor or actress or a writer or whatever they'd like to do in the creative industry that is, of course, entertainment. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? Oh, that's a really fun question. Um, I mean, to me, like the, the thing I'm most passionate about that I hope would inspire younger generations and then inspire them to then take it on and inspire even younger generations below them is for me personally, my big initiative is, is empowerment of women. And just, I, I like to come at all of my roles, whether I be acting in them, writing them, just producing a movie with them in it with, you know, a lot of agency. And um, I am a bit, you know, tired of the, the, persona or the portrayals of women that just are are more one dimensional and all that. So that's um, certainly something I'm a big advocate for. And I hope to be inspirational in that sense for younger generations. But I think, you know, the way that that can be expanded outside of acting or outside of even gender is just um, just to have agency in your own art, to feel confident, to bring your own opinion to it and um, not feel that you need to conform to society's you know expectations or what they deem is acceptable or um normal or stereotypical you know everyone's unique and my personal opinion is that art is only interesting when people bring what's like odd and weird about them to it so if you're gonna try and conform you know to what we've seen a million times it's not interesting and it doesn't help us evolve as people so whatever's weird unique about you i hope younger generations continue to do that. It's easy to try to put the same Instagram filter that everybody else has and look the same these days, but it's ultimately not that interesting. Connection's always a good thing to have. Yeah. Uh, you know, I hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. But before I let each one of you go, please take the time to promote yourself on social media or where else we can find you on the wide world of the internet. Yes, I am also on Instagram and Twitter, though I don't really use it that much, uh, at Kay Veganis. And I'm on Facebook under my full name, Kristen Veganis. And I have a website, kristenveganis.com, with news. Like I, like I said, that ends this, this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You, of course, find this interview and the thousands of others that I've done over the past 12 years on tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. Of course, we are on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT media. And of course, two geeks talking is the word two, not the number two. If you use the number two, you really haven't been following me for 12 years now, have you? Shame on <laughs> you. That being said, uh, you can find me on social media at Kurt Sasso on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Uh, but that ends this episode. And this will be the very first episode of January 2021 because... The film is going to be released on Redbox January 5th, I believe you said. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right. Thanks, everyone, listening and watching. Tune in next week for another great interview on Two Geeks Talking, where everyone has a story to tell, and it's up to me to help bring that out. Thank you. Hey, all. Kurt Sasso here from Two Geeks Talking. If you like this video and these quick clips here, make sure you take a look at our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash TGT Media. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe as well hit the bell to make sure you get notifications of course from videos like this here uh thank you everyone for listening and watching over the years and keep listening and watching for new and exciting interviews with talented creative people in the entertainment industry i'm your host kurt sasso thank you so much